Let's go ahead and call the meeting of the uh, budget workshop to order. Uh, glad to see everybody this afternoon. Uh, we have given you a, a budget that is balanced. It's with no raises but no layoffs. Uh, but while you're kind of looking at that, uh, it came up the last time, Roger, you've been looking into uh, food costs, and I think you've been checking with other facilities, and uh, so yeah, I know you're working at it. I'm going to just be honest with you, Judge. Us compared to the other facilities, we're doing a fantastic job. You know, uh, of course, you know, we did raise our food budget a little bit um, this coming year, 2012-2013 uh, versus 2011-2012, uh, because of the House Bill 463, we knew our population was going to drop this year, uh, which I think Emily can vouch for me from July till December 1st of January, we've done actually better than what we thought we would. From January, uh, probably up to March, middle of March, uh, population dropped. Um, I was at 125, 130 around uh, end of January, February, maybe first of March. I do, I do apologize. I've been so busy today. Uh, my population is knocking on 170 now, so we're up, you know, 40, 45 inmates. What we was six, eight weeks ago. Now I've been beating the bushes and beating the roads to get these inmates, and some of these inmates are not pleasant inmates, uh, you know. But uh, with, with, a, with, with me seeing the population going back up is the reason I added this money back to the budget. Uh, you know, with the fuel costs the way they are, it's handed down to the food. The food's going up. As long as the economy's like this, everything's going to go up. But the food prices have just skyrocketed. Um, you know, I'll be honest with you. You know, uh, if my population goes back up to 200, if I go back up to full capacity, at $140,000, I don't believe I can feed them all, to be honest with you. Sure. I mean, I, I, I've done this $140,000 at roughly 160 inmates. You know, if we, jump, if we jump back up to full house. Which we hope we will. Which we hope we will. I mean, unfortunately, my line of business is is, is to make money, you got to spend money. Yeah. Um, you know, so that's kind of where we're at right now. Uh, Have you, you know, heard any more, Raj, on the... Uh, I know we're coming up on July 1. Right. Uh, that's when they're supposed to make the decision on the private prisons. Have you heard any scuttlebutt or uh, judge you're meeting with your association regularly? You know, as far as our association, what we are hearing is there's nothing on paper. But what we keep getting told is, is it's not going to be renewed. Now then, uh, what was it, North Point that burnt down a couple yes. years ago? Mm -hmm. It's not hardly on track to be open. They was hoping that that thing would have been open already. I think it's going to be after July before this thing's open with. So there is a possibility they may have to keep Otter Creek, one of these private prisons, possibly open month to month basis type thing instead of doing a 12 month or 20 month, four month contract. Uh, now, North Point is, is that medium, Raj? Uh, that medium? I believe that's medium, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you know, we just got back from Louisville today. I sent two guys to Louisville today. I was supposed to pick up five inmates. We got there and it was four inmates. I went last week. I actually had a meeting in E-Town yesterday and was able to pick up one in Hardin County. Uh, you know, so like I said, our population is going up. Um, you know, um, as I said, it's, they're not real pleasing inmates, but they're paying customers. Uh, but as I said, I mean, I, I've made some calls to actually some surround, uh, surrounding uh, county jails and also uh, up around uh, Grayson County, I believe, at Breckenridge, isn't that up around yes. Grayson County? Mm -hmm. And actually, them being uh, uh, probably the closest uh, uh, size jail as we've got, I think they've got 190 beds. Uh, for this fiscal year, they budget $190,000 for food. Uh, you know, 
Uh, yeah, I don't. I think the food costs are going to obviously depend on your prisoners. My question was, if our prisoners are down, how could our food costs go up? That's. It, but it sounds like our prisoners oh, wow. yeah. are going up. Yeah. So yeah. then, would our subsidy come down as a result of that? Yeah, we dropped it from eight to. So either way, what I'm six. saying is, either way, there's going. If his prisoners are down, his food costs aren't going to be increased. And if his prisoners are up, his subsidy is going to be down. So there's some savings there in that budgeted amount yes. is what, it was what my point was. Yeah, yeah. the more prisoners yeah. we have, the more, as long as they're class D, sure. that's Absolutely. the more money we get. Right. And then, but that Water does drive up our food right. cost and our medical. Yeah, obviously. obviously. You still yeah. getting some C's too? Or Pardon? You still getting some C's too? Some fish, yes. Yeah. C's, class C's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got C's, D's. Of course, we've got, you know, there again, as I said, we've, since last Wednesday, I think we picked up five state inmates. <laughs> now, then, here's the kicker losing three tomorrow, going to the penitentiary. You know, mm -hmm. we got, I think, two getting out on early release tomorrow, maybe three or four getting out on early. So it's, it's a yo yo type thing. I mean, we're going to be up and down. Uh, if they shut these prisons down, I mean, I've been getting inmates from Louisville, from Jefferson County. <laughs> Uh, Lincoln County, Lincoln County, they uh, was being overpopulated. The Department of Corrections has mm -hmm. actually kind of said, hey, you guys got to get rid of these inmates because they really don't have facility housing state inmates. Um, you know, so last year's budget, because of this House Bill 463, you know, we had huge release, you know, in January. I, I lost 30 inmates in January, you know, um, roughly 30 inmates. Um, but as I said, surprisingly, I didn't think that I'd pick them back up this mm -hmm. quick. I knew eventually it would. I thought it might take a couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, um, you know, somehow we're picking inmates back up, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I don't look for another huge release anytime soon. Okay. Um, you know, and of course, we did kind of budget this year on... You know, I'll be honest with you, I got more inmates now than I really thought that I would when we first done this budget. Mm -hmm. you know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, I, I will say, uh, I suppose that we're still running, I've got the place. Mm -hmm. The last court meeting, I, I shared with you that that uh, I'm not going to be able to get this vehicle that I asked for till the 13's come out. Uh, this budget here, we did not put in there the the money to get that car because the vehicle because I was looking at getting it this year, so that's going to be falling in the next year's and we did not put that in for next year's. Okay. Um, I I want to get with a county attorney and it, this is perfectly legal. I, I've got to get with a county attorney. Uh, I actually I, I've been bragging about a van that we send up and down the road. And, I actually, and I, I tell you, I, I said I picked up five state inmates last week. I picked up about 20. I forgot I picked up 11 at Paducah last week because I actually went to Paducah and, and picked up 11 inmates last Thursday, I believe it was, and uh, drove this van, and uh, we may end up having to have a van. Now then, I believe that I can get with a county attorney I, I can buy one, I can purchase one of these vehicles out of commissary. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but I think that we might as well go ahead and get two of these vehicles. You guys buying one of them because we do have to be careful what we do with one for commissary. I can, I can check job sites, I can transport uh, inmates back and forth to work. But we, I may ask you guys actually to buy the 15 passenger van, which is probably, I, I haven't priced one, but I feel like probably be cheaper than the other vehicle, I think. Uh, be pretty much a plain vein type, uh, plain Jane type van. So I'll work with you guys as far as as far as that. Like I said, I uh, I'll get with Jeff and and it's perfectly legal to buy one of them out of the commissary. You know, it's just well, we're limited on what we can do with it. Yes, right. yes, yes, yes. I can't actually use it to pick inmates up right. to better the county, but I can use it. Mm -hmm. For their benefit to go to job sites yes. and those types. And, and they kind of, they let you use it to haul them back and forth to hospitals and yeah. stuff like that. I mean, as long as you're not taking advantage of them, yeah. you know. Um, Any questions of Roger? I just, are, now are we subsidizing again eight, the 800? Is that where we are? Uh, actually, I don't. after I... It, it depends on, on y'all's final decisions regarding any layoffs and raises and things okay. like that. 
but um, as of Friday, it was five ninety three five. Um, so we're down. The subsidy's down. Yeah, that will. And that hopefully, will if have we get need the, to be raised, um, if we have to increase his line item for equipment. Right. Yeah. So, and then that throws us out of balance a little bit again. So. But hopefully, if the inmate the population increases, our money intake increases, it will offset each other. Mm -hmm. That's what we're hoping, but that's exactly. that's an unknown. You know, and and I met uh, with a county attorney uh, and some more uh, folks last week about doing some ankle monitoring, possibly. You know, um, you know, there's different things that maybe will help us on our on our own county inmates. You know. Yeah, that's where we get nothing. That's it's all on us. So, but I'll be honest with you. I, I did count the other day. Uh, out of the 160 inmates I had the other day, um, I think there was 120 paying customers. I'm actually uh, housing a few more for Grays County right now because their population is up. You know, it appears with the jails that I've been talking to in the past couple of weeks, it's it appears that all the county's population probably possibly going up some. You know. So, uh, it, of course, you know, and, and the, you know, the money maker is is keeping our own county inmates down, and the state population going up now. So if we can stay on the county attorney a little bit. That, that, that tells me that House Bill 463 ain't working. <laughs> That's what exactly what that tells me. Well, and I think that I shared with you guys a couple of meetings ago the the House Bill 463 uh, was supposed to save 40 million dollars, and. Uh, 25% of that was supposed to come back to the counties, and and uh, the last that I got, uh, I'm no rocket scientist, but the best I remember, 25% of 40 million would be 10 million. But I think that the counties are getting back about 3.7 million on that. So, but hopefully, as the years go along, that will raise. What's the up. thing to remember about House Bill 463 and and the whole uh, theory behind it was uh, they're going to let out the nonviolence, yeah. uh, but if they come back, they're on our dime yeah. and not on the state's dime. Yeah. So it's everyone that we yeah. parole out and, and transfer out, then they come back, yeah. they're our prisoners until they're adjudicated again and get yes. uh, committed to the state. Uh, and it takes a long time for some of these people to go through the system uh, to get classified as a state prisoner. The fellow we've got back being tried, I think he's back on our dime now. Yes, yes. Until such time as the trial, we can yeah, see the jury. We've been there about 17 months right now, and I don't even know when the next trial date's set now. They had a they Has not set yet, but you, you've got another one that's going to be going through the same thing, too. Yeah. 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 He bonded out. He actually bonded out. To the, yeah, we had another one that, that uh, uh, actually come back on us, and that he actually bonded out, though. So. He spent five years on 15 and got it overturned. <laughs> Lucky enough, was able to. Yeah. Any other questions of Rod? Tech, you're up. There were some questions about uh, what projects and all were involved, your, your crew's involved in, and those type of things. So if you just explain what you're doing now, where you're going, and what you got on the drawing board. Well, First of all, we've got, as you well know, the, the county owns so many entities. I mean, you got the courthouse, the animal shelter, senior citizens, uh, Mike Miller Park, the list goes on and on. Just off the top of my head, I've got 22 different spots that we have to take care of day to day. And when you consider the courthouse, one third of it is approximately 100 years old, a lot of maintenance. And some of the other buildings are, are up in the years. So uh, that's a full time job right there, just keeping keeping water leaks and, and light bulb changed and, and uh, paint. paint. Good job, we paint more than painters do. Uh, grant jobs. In the last couple of years, we, we did, we're working on right now the animal shelter grant. Uh, we've been in the progress of uh, changing out all the light fixtures for the energy audit, which we took care of the courthouse, 
the sheriff's department, the uh, jail, and the three senior citizens buildings, and the road department so far. So that's an ongoing thing, but it's, we did, we built a walking trail over at Wesley Village on a, that was a grant job. Uh, last fall we built a building out at the landfill for the recycling center, which uh, really wasn't a grant job, but there was some grant money involved. And I mean, we were indirectly involved with, with getting that grant money. Uh, we've got a splash pad, pad job coming up at the park, which is uh, going to entail a lot of, a lot of concrete work. We're going to have to build a bathroom, changing area, uh, the generator out here. That was a grant job. So just in the last couple of years, what we saved in grant money alone, which as you well know, when we get a 75%, 75, 25% grant, the state comes up 75% and we've got either got to come up with a 25% or it's in-kind labor. And I think Emily will back me up on the fact that it's always our in-kind labor. So our salaries and our in-kind work saves the money from the fiscal court directly. So, you know, just, just those four or five jobs right there added up to about $60,000 in-kind labor. Uh, you know, we built a new maintenance building for the landfill, put in a, a pit, added on to it. There's always something. Of course, uh, two or three years ago, we had the ice storm, and it's the first thing we did. I got my guys to go to the road department, and we helped clean up roads, make sure we got all the roads clear. As soon as that was taken care of. We went to the park and started cleaning the park up, which was a mess. And we were there for about a month just solid hauling trees and debris away from the ice storm. Of course last fall last spring, excuse me, we had the, the flood of the century. And uh don't know exactly you don't know how much we were involved with that, but what we did you can't put a price tag on in my opinion. I just don't know how many homes we saved. Thanks to Roger, he was he was a great help uh, as far as supplying inmates to, to fill sandbags. But we just turned our facility into a sandbag operation, and I thought it went real well. And there's God only knows how many thousands of sandbags went out of that place. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I don't really think you can put a, a price tag on on what we did for the county in that <clears throat> four or five week period. So. Any questions of Tech? From anybody? No, but I just I want to make sure that you guys know that I certainly am not questioning. It, when you're looking at a whole budget and and sometimes you're not as familiar with operations. It's difficult to say, oh, Roger, we could cut your budget $15,000. It's difficult to say that. Now, on paper, it makes sense that if you have less inmates, you would have less food cost. So I appreciate you two coming in and explaining those sorts of things because a lot of times, and I don't know about the other two commissioners, but I don't intricately know about your day-to-day -day operations and what projects you do. I know I see you out, you know, um, and I know I see your crew. But if I were to sit down and say it's efficient to have a special projects crew, I wouldn't know that unless you come in and give a report like you just did. And that's not because I'm questioning anybody's integrity or anybody else's, but it's good to know these things because when you look at a budget, you can say, this has saved us this much money and it's good to have those crews in place or it's good to have this line item for the jail because it's saving money elsewhere. So I just, I want to make sure that there's, there's no ill feelings. It's nothing different than we've done with Larry or the sheriff. I've got a whole report here that they've generated from the sheriff's office just to make sure it's efficient because cutting $2 million is a tough thing. And and I just want to make sure I'm informed. So I've asked questions, and I know the other two have as well. And I appreciate what you do, and I want to make sure that you know that it, there's nothing personal in any of this. But ultimately, we have to vote on what to cut, and that's going to hurt somebody somewhere. So I appreciate you all coming in and explaining it. And, Gary, I'm the one that asked the question. I guess it's, I, I guess you being here today stem from the question I asked last week, and Larry was needing someone in the park, and I knew that you all had operated with four 
and I, same as you said, I don't follow you every day, so I don't have a clue. But I thought if you'd operated with a four, perhaps you could again and loan him someone to get through the summer. And that was my question. Mm -hmm. So again, it's nothing to you or your department. And we have, uh, of course, Jack. And the judge said everybody uh, had to cut. So because yeah. Jack is off, uh, you know, with with he's had heart surgery. Don't know when will he go back, Tech? To know we don't really know yet. He he's got two more weeks of uh, therapy, and I, I mean we hope Jack will be able to come back. But I talked to him this morning, as a matter of fact, and, and he said that you know as far as he knows, when the therapy's over, they'll get in touch with the surgeon and they'll go from there. So I know he wants to come back. Jack's a worker. Yeah, he wants he's, to work. He's a great asset. Well, I'd like to add to that too. Yeah. Gary just brought up the big stuff, but. There's not a week goes by that we don't have to have them come out there and do something at the park. They just put in a new window back at the concession area. Uh, if we have anything go wrong at the day parks, the docks, we have to call special projects to do that. They built our bridges last year. And I expressed to Mike the other day that, that, that I'll find a way to make it without an employee. You know, because I know with these big projects coming up, Gary's going to need somebody a lot worse than I'm going to need them. So, and they'll be in the park probably for two months when we start the splash pad anyway. Yeah. So we don't know how long that's going to take. When do you anticipate uh, being able to start, Larry? Right? Oh uh, well, it's the uh, we, state who, plumbing inspector. Who are we waiting on now? The state plumbing asking. inspector has the plans. We're waiting okay. on Jan Brown. Okay. Um, but we know we're going to have to. We know we're going to have to build a bathroom. We wasn't yeah. really sure about be, that. It could be any day. Okay. So we're we're getting so we're, there. We're close. We just. Finally. Can you say with all certainty, Whit, that we're going to have a splash pad by the summertime? Uh, no comments. Sir. Okay. <laughs> just just check it. Just check it. But we would like to. We've been planning this for, what, two years, Larry? Well, At least. It started before I even came on board, and it's yeah. been a year and a half, so yeah, yeah, two years. Yeah. Any other questions of Tech or Larry or anybody? Uh like I said, what you've got before you is a bare bones, balanced budget with no layoffs, but no salary increases. Emily, what did you say that savings was on a salary increase if we didn't implement the recommended? 3%? Originally, I said 112, and. I changed, the, to be quite honest with you, I changed this thing at least nine times last week. So, I around $100,000 to $110,000. I can't put a number dollar amount on it. That's close, though. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. If we, let me see if I can do this. On a positive note, <laughs> we pay, is it $300 a year to be a member of the Coal Coalition? Yes. And uh, we got a check from the coal severance tax today for 17000 17, was it? Yes, 17000 17000 so I think that's a pretty good investment by us rejoining the Coal Coalition last year because we got a check last year as well. Uh, that was good. We, which, which, we're an impact. We have a lot of coal here. We do, uh, but they only give you credit for the coal that comes in by man. trucks. Yeah. yeah, they don't. If they'd give us credit by rail and barge, man, we would really yeah. be in tall cotton. But they only give you credit for uh, barge. I mean, uh, truckloads uh, of coal, which the plants, a lot of the plants, use yeah, quite a bit. ISP, I think, still yeah. And alloy, special metals in their mix, yeah. yeah. Any uh, body else? Well, Emily, you said that if I had any suggestions or whatnot, uh -huh. to let yeah. you know. And yes, please. Just wondered if, if the physical court is, is considered doing this. I've been working on this for the last four or five years and we finally got it completed. I've completely restructured the pay scale of the sheriff's office, every position. And as 
our guys will retire, that's when the benefit's going to start showing up. William is on this new pay schedule. Our entry level is lower than what it has been in the past. And eventually, as our guys, as we retire and new people come in, that payroll is going to start coming down. And I wondered if the physical court has considered doing something like that, having each individual uh, job have its own pay scale. And after so long, that's where your increments come in. You know, the state does that. I worked under the state, you know, when I was a park ranger, mm. pay grades for certain jobs. Uh, you know, take a serious look at that and see where your entry level should be. And because you have such a large workforce, your turnover rate's going to be a lot higher than mine because there is so many people because there's some coming up approaching, you know, retirement age and stuff like that. And I just wondered if y'all considered anything like that. And I've got mine here. If y'all would like to see a copy of it and how I've got mine broke down now for each officer, each detective, each supervisor, you know, where their pay scale is and how they get their increments. And I've got it set up over a five year period. That's when they top out. And the only thing they get from that point is their cost of living raises. And that's all they get when they top out in that five year period because it takes five years to be completely vested in our retirement program. Mm -hmm. So that's what that's, I based that That's on. another thing we got to look at because our retirement, did you tell me it's going up to 37 this yes. year? I'm 37. pretty sure it's 37.6 is happening. 37.6. See, that continues to go up and up every year exactly. too. And but like I said, you know, I, yeah. you know, I, yeah, I'd like to look at that. You know, sure. strongly uh, consider that because sure. that way it's, I think it's kind of on a level playing field where as your years of service, it's got to mean something, you know. I benefited from it. When I first started at the sheriff's office, I made the same thing somebody been there 15 years. To me, I kind of, you know, I when I'm on this end of it, kind of have an issue with that. I think the guy that has the most time in, the knowledge, the experience, he should be paid a little bit more than the entry level guy. Mm -hmm. And I, and that's, like I said, we, me and David both has worked on this for about the last four or five years and finally got it sure. completed. And I didn't know if y'all would consider doing something sure, like that too because we'll, it's... We'll make copies of it and give it to everybody okay. if that's all right. I'll, I'll do that. You all sure. do annual evaluations at the sheriff's office? We are getting into that as well. Uh, I've got four or five different ones from all over the state and we're trying to combine and make our own fit it to ourselves and do yearly evaluations and the way that's going to work. Uh, the patrol officers are, will be evaluated by their supervisors mm -hmm. then their supervisor and on up the chain, but it's going to be reversed. The guy on the bottom of the pole is going to evaluate Your their supervisors. supervisors as well. I only think that's fair. I've had a, a lot of the employees tell me that they feel frustrated that the raises are given in blanket increments. So somebody that outworks a coworker by 50% gets the same raise as somebody who doesn't. And then when we get into disciplinary measures, you have a problem because you don't have a measured track of that person's performance. We've seen that time and time again. So I would like, I would be interested personally in looking at some sort of a way to gradually implement yeah, those raises based on performance we're trying to implement a lot of stuff like that you know like i said i'm getting information from all over the state really to see how others do it and kind of conform that to our own our own needs so to speak but yeah we're definitely looking at that yeah in fact gordon hargrove brought this up years ago mm -hmm. that we should look at instead of a just a blanket across mm -hmm. the board increase that we look look at uh, uh, at a schedule yeah uh, you know and uh, it was vote it was voted down for whatever reason but I, I think it's really something we need to look yeah, into yeah. I you know I think it has merit I, I do well, that's, that's the way this is built in there's certain criteria that has to be met before you actually get to that next level yeah okay now in looking, and I, I hope you've all looked this over, um, because uh, this is bare bones. It is a balanced budget, but you have very little in reserve. 
19,000 in general, yes. In general, 19,000 general fund. So, uh, it's not something we want, it, it's, but it is a balanced budget. And that's what we have to have. And you may want to take this home and look over tonight because what I'd like to do tomorrow in our regular court meeting is approve this as to form and classification. Now, that doesn't mean we can't adjust, change, or uh, move figures around, but we send it up to the state to be looked at by the Department of Revenue and the Department for Local Government uh, to see that we are in compliance. And then at that point, then we have another month or so to look at it uh, before we have a final reading. Uh, tomorrow would be the first, uh, the first reading, which that's generally what we do. We try to have a first reading in early May, and, and then uh, the final reading will be the last meeting in, in June. And we can also, if, if you all all come to agreement on any changes now, I can implement those and bring you a revised copy to reflect those changes for tomorrow morning. I think my, one of my concerns is that Tony said there was going to be some consequence to not replacing that employee that he's requested. I would be interested to hear from him like we did from, from Tech and Roger and, and what that consequence is because if we're talking about reduction of services, I'd like to know, you know what exactly we're reducing by, by not replacing that person in his office. Um, mm -hmm. Same as the park. I would just like to hear on the record what that's going to do to you not replacing that person in your department. Um. Well, when Larry and I talked, and Larry, I don't want to speak for you, but uh, you told me you felt like that you could maintain I just what like we're I doing. I maintain because of the crew we have right now. we got a younger crew, and they've done such an excellent job. And what I did the other day, I sat down with our crew and went over everything we've gone over here because they're just as much involved in our budget as I am. Mm -hmm because, well, they're the major part of it. And let them all know and let them know that if there's any suggestions they have to bring to me so I can bring to you guys, mm -hmm. because they've got a, ideas that I sure won't have. Right. And all of them, they're the ones that came up with it that they could pull together and do without an employee. Okay. So that's that's yeah. coming from the guys out at the park. So and, I and commend too, them we, for that. We looked at this uh, from a standpoint of not having to lay anybody off. And that's the last thing we want to do. But to be honest with you, uh, without not replacing that employee, somebody's going to have to go at somewhere, some point. Uh, you know, I just don't see any way around it. But what about the early retirement option? I know Bob had asked about anybody that might be approaching retirement that might be willing to take retirement. Where the, did we get anywhere? Voluntary layoff. We we talked about voluntary layoff, and one of the one of the, the questions that came up, uh, we might have a couple of people willing to do that if we would pay their insurance. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. under Kentucky law, we cannot do that. After nine days, they must go on COBRA. Jeff and I looked in, or Jeff looked into it uh, because we thought, well, we'd be better off if mm -hmm. we had a, if we just paid that, mm -hmm. you know, instead of making mm -hmm. them pay it. But legally, we can't do it. Uh, they they must go on Cobra after nine days now. Still, if they had a spouse that had insurance, they, I mean, there's other circumstances. There's, yeah. I, I didn't know if we wanted to at least try to. Well, we could give them we an can, option. Sure, we can send a not memo anybody, out. To, not anything mandatory. Just we can send a memo out see. to each department. Uh, Jeff, what about early retirement incentives? I know in the private sector they can do that. Is is the law different for governmental agencies? Are you allowed to offer any sort of an incentive for an early retirement for people that are probably already have their years in? They're just yeah. There's, you'd, have, you'd have to establish some kind of program that applies equally, mm -hmm. you know, across the board. That and you know that it needs to be uh, there was some benefit mm -hmm. to the county. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm sure that that's possible. Yes. Well, I would think a lot of your people that have their years in are going to be making a much higher wage than somebody coming yeah. in to replace them. Russell, do you have anybody that's got their years in? You don't, do you? Just me. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
Center. Is she hinting, Russ? She must be. No. She, must, <laughs> she might be hinting yeah. at you, Russ. No. Oh. Take all of your guys, nobody's even close, are they? No, I don't think so. Park, I know if not. Uh, you don't have anybody, do you, Kev? You're going to have a mass exodus probably in about six years. Six years. When I've got uh, somewhere the in the neighborhood of about eight that could retire yeah. with 20, 20 year yeah. retirement, and mm -hmm. I'd say most of them probably will. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're at right now, I mean, I had two to retire this year. Um, uh, actually, today, I guess it's final. Uh, uh, <laughs> that uh, that uh, has got 20 years, and now then they're of age where they can retire. I've got some more people that has got their 20 years in. But they're of age, age don't hit mm -hmm. you know, they, Under the new rule? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes. You know, so, you know, they can't, they can't leave, you know, because we're talking about being, you know, anywhere from 45 to 50 years old, That's something sure. like that, you know. And I understand but, that. But, but I'm with Kevin in the next six, seven years. I mean, you know. You're going to have several just like I am. have several ready to roll, you know. Yeah, I was thinking about eight years I may retire. I don't know what you're thinking about. It. No. No, I, but the 20 years, see, the new guys, they're 25. They're 25. They're, so the ones that Kev's talking about and you're talking about still meet the 20 years, 20 and out. So, yeah. Which I've got several that's got 20. Yeah, I know. I know. There is one at the road department that is talking about possibly going in September, I believe. Okay. That would leave you four short instead of three, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. okay. All right, y'all want to take a little break and look this over? Or? Yeah. Get some coffee or whatever. Let's take a little five, ten minute break. Uh, Jeff, we uh, Russell got a call, and apparently the city has annexed some areas where we maintain the roads. Now, do they automatically become city streets, or do we have to do something to change that over? I mean, if they've annexed it in, they, I guess, automatically become city streets uh, rather than county roads. We have no. the same issue with some of our water lines. I don't know. Well, utilities stay with different. the the utility company that has them that already had them in existence. Uh, now you get into a different thing where, like over in Calvert, when uh, where it was annexed, then they added sewers, so it. It's kind of become kind of a joint project. Mm -hmm. Roads, um, I don't know. I, can, I don't know off the top of my head. I think they become the, the, for the with this. I know state roads. It doesn't change state roads. Right. But, but I I, think, if I recall, Russell, I think you correct right. me if I'm wrong, when they annexed down to Peanut Hollinger's property, that became a city street rather than a county road there by LWD. That did, but... I like at Hollinger Road. Right. I think it's still ours. Or you yeah, know, they stopped, it. but I think they stopped there. No, it goes on to McFarland Road. Oh, it does. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it may not be on both sides. But they claim that they go on down further down Sharkell Road than McFarland Road. Because one of the roads in question was that little bitty gravel road, header road. Yeah, heater, 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 Outside, but they part of it. Go a little further down. You know where the Oakley boy lives down there mm -hmm. on the left? Oh, is that right? That's what they're saying. They've annexed him into the city? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well. Yeah, because when, when we have calls out that way, that's that's the problems we have, too, and they say it goes down that far. Yeah. Okay. Well, I, I just... I'll have to check to be sure, but check. I think that the... That technically, the city takes that over. 
that road, Johnson Riley Road and Haddock's Ferry Road is the three that was brought up. And they have been annexed into the city, as far as you know. Yeah, Johnson Riley, it's right in the yeah, center of all it's the... It's right there by Calvert... Right there at Calvert uh, City Calvert Lumber Lake, Company. Uh, Calvert Lumber. Yeah. And then Haddock's Ferry is goes the one that goes down by the... Uh, SKW. Yeah, SKW down the river. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've always maintained that. <coughs> All right, we'll look into it. And, uh... Okay, let's open it back up. Uh, questions from anybody? I was asking during the break, would it be possible to take out a loan on the mower equipment to be able to fund the phone project kind of a trade-off but the phone project is about 75,000 up front but it provides an immediate $46,000 per year return in cost savings the one that Andy proposed to us and I don't see it anywhere in our budget but Emily has been talking about future projects and savings down the road yeah. and and if we don't find some way to pay for that and get up to the data network, um, then our phone expenses are going to continue to be high and, and of course we don't get to realize that savings. So there's a little bit of an upfront cost, but then it within the mm -hmm. same year I think he proposed I, I couldn't remember months. he said in the future and I didn't remember six months eight, I think is what he said. Eighteen months to be up and running. To be up and running. Oh, up to and be running, up and running. Yeah, but in eighteen months and then it would see the savings. Yeah, so your phone bills would stop as soon as that's up and running but, mm -hmm. or they would decrease basically. Um, and I didn't know if, and plus that would give us, it would save us another 100000 125 that we'd have in reserves if we looked at doing something like that, like what we had talked about doing with the refuse. And I don't like doing loans any more than anybody else does, but in this, in this situation. Well, are, you, uh, uh, are you talking about a loan, uh, commissioner, or a lease purchase? E Either way, whatever, I mean, whatever is. Whatever would be the most prudent. I, I just thought it would give us the money to complete the phone project and then also give us 125000 in reserves instead of starting with 19 in reserves. Well, and, and Missy, I, maybe I misunderstood you, but that 75000 for this phone, the phone system is included in this budget It already. is in the new budget. Yes. So then he would be able to start on it in June? Um, July. 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 In June, June it would make it an encumbrance for yeah. this year. Yeah. I don't know. It, it might just keep us from... Yeah. Being so much I was in the now I may be totally home. wrong. I was thinking he said after July mm -hmm. one, but he might have said June. I, I, I don't know. He had, I think last time he and I had talked, he thought it wasn't going to be till the end of the year when he was going to be able to get started. So mm -hmm. I, I just thought that's you know, why I was thinking July one, but I'm, I may be wrong. We, I'll check with Andy. Okay. Uh, well, that's already that's in the budget. Right. It's already, it's in, the already budget. in the budget. Yes. That would, mm -hmm. that would make your reserves. In, in light of that, I would suggest mm -hmm. that we not take a loan unless we saw that yeah. we needed to. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I just thought it wasn't. We, well, we can go ahead and look into it, Terry, and see if. Tax, if we needed to take a small loan to make till tax time, yeah. that's already in the budget. Because what she was saying, I understand, would it would buy far offset any interest that we might be paying, that yeah. much of mm -hmm. a savings. But if it's already in there, calculated, yeah. then, we then it's not an issue. Yeah. If we get to looking for reserves, of course, a lease to own would let us put some in reserves mm -hmm. for this year. And that's what the right. refuse district is looking mm -hmm. at with their compactor truck to that would, spread that debt out rather we're than balance, taking a big But that chunk. would give us maybe whatever 100, 150. But I believe we've already ordered our. Have we already ordered? Uh, we've got two of them on. On order, but right? I think, yeah. I think she's talking about the one that we're talking about. For next year. For yeah. next year. Oh, oh, yeah. okay. I'm yeah. sorry. Even those two, if we, we, there wouldn't be any reason we might not be able to work a lease to own on them, could we? Wouldn't necessarily be a deal breaker. We, we just get uh, we just, Wilson in. If you call Mark and have Mark take a look and see what what it would, would cost the, us extra. That would be the immediate. Uh, that would be the immediate. Because uh, reserve savings. Uh, even though this is a balanced budget, as we've said before. Uh, it's going to be worse next year because your your fixed costs keep going up uh, in the way of insurance, in the way of retirement, and, and, and all of the things that we have no control over. Uh, that you're talking about the next track. Yeah. 
either or. I mean, I'm not saying we couldn't. I wouldn't say you could. Even after look. we done sign paper contracts and everything. Yeah, I mean that doesn't mean you couldn't go back and set up a lease to own system. It's just a different way of financing things, but certainly it's. it's it would be doable if we wanted to do it. If we don't, and well, we've got the dollars. What my to take suggestion care of would be is call uh, Mark Wilson. That's who we dealt with, I believe, through John Deere. John Deere, and uh, to they see got if, a program see if he could give us a wouldn't necessarily they actually a figure. They, they actually encourage least on so yeah, a lot, in a lot of cases. I just give us a little bit of manpower. Else, y'all seem to be doing pretty good now. Are you holding up? Well, we just have to drop a little bit of stuff every day, you know, help to hold stuff off. I don't mean, I don't hear any complaints. I, maybe you must be keeping up fairly well. Yeah, I, mean, I think not. Are you going to need some but, people to help with the mowers? But like starting tomorrow, we're going to start mowers out. That right there is going to take care of. So I'm saying, do you need, do you, are you going to be in a real jam? Do you need people, part-time people for the summer to help with the mowing? Following the, would well, that help? Because it's going to take nine people. <coughs> Take care of the mowers. I, I, that's what I'm trying to figure. Is you, if you if you don't have some part time help, is that going to, that's going to cause you to utilize your full time people that could be doing? Yeah. Is that sure. going to take mm -hmm. away from a lot yeah. of what you can get done? Right. You, yeah. So you're saying you probably need some part time people to help follow mowers. Would make sense because yeah. we we can get those for seven dollars and twenty five cents mm -hmm. per hour. I'd rather, I mean, you don't, you don't want to get to where you can't provide the service. I mean, I, right. I, mean, I haven't had a complaint, so apparently y'all are not, y'all are keeping up very but, well. I mean, you haven't put, more, gonna, put more as out yet, right? No, they're right. going to start, well, some of them started today, you know, mm -hmm. just around close. But they're going to okay. start tomorrow, really. Except for the one complaint, have you had any complaints on the spraying that's been done? Just two, one small complaint and one major Big. one. <laughs> Have they ever come out and got the number and everything to call to talk to these people? The people come out and met with Jerry White. Oh, did they? Okay. Yes. And they so. took soil sample. They wanted to take samples for themselves. Sure. Well, that's reasonable. But, I, uh, but I just want to make sure they were being looked and taken care of. And I mean, I would too because, I mean, it's... Like a little over twenty-five thousand dollars. Judge, I don't know how we yeah. might work that in between now and tomorrow. We're going to go ahead and prove this and, uh, and maybe try to seek an amendment. But I think we'd be ahead if we would, maybe. And what Russ was saying, if we're able to provide him with a few, I don't know how many you think you'd need, Russ. Part-time people to have follow your you mowing crew. Just use them in the truck, don't you? Yeah, th three. Be three. Three people. Mm -hmm. For how long a period of time? As long as we mow. Until October. Until fall, yeah. Until October. Then you sure well, that'd, be a, so that'd be a problem with the school. Yeah. Uh, let's just put a pencil to it, Terry, and see what yeah. what it what it looks like, and then see. I, I, which which time would be more important to you? Uh, uh, is <coughs> like now or later in the year, or would it was it does that matter? Wouldn't really matter on that part. If you got a hundred le less miles right now to mow until later in the year, the last mm -hmm. mowing will be an, an extra hundred miles. But see, supposedly. And la last year during the summer program, it expired when, Judge? July or August? July. July sometime in July. Mm -hmm. And so you probably, I don't know what you did after that if you had to well, juggle, we, juggle men around to make it. We kind of used them other workers that we got. See, we had the storm too. workers too yeah. that we could use last year. That program's right. over. But I know year after year we've had about six weeks of summer program to help with that project. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know how they'd done that in the past. If I, if I guess I just had to make do afterwards when school started yeah. because I'd be minus that. Many. I had them checking culverts. The project water people, mm -hmm. they'd check the culverts on the roads, and that's how I got by using them. The While we were mowing, they check the culverts, and that yeah, was agreeable check. under the contract we yeah. had. Yeah. If you, if might you have, don't mind, a little bit of a. Yeah. <laughs> but between now and tomorrow, maybe think about that some more and see what what you think would would help or, or what you think would work in that regard as far as helping with okay. the mowing. 
we might consider that. All right. Of course, we can go ahead and approve this anyway. So, how uh, our maintenance on our our equipment was staying pretty well caught up, Russ. I, it's there's days you know there's you know they'll get caught up, then the next day you might go in there and there may be half a dozen things in there. But it's just something we never know. Right. Very roughly three people just for July through July, August, and September should run approximately 11 to between 11 to and 11 5 with per fringe. With no, that's all of them. All of them. Three people. With what? With yeah. front, wait, how you mean that? We have to pay their FICA match, yeah. their Social yeah. Security yeah. Medicare. Right. So, what is I guess on here Minimum it's proposed mm -hmm. that we cut. 10 positions from the from the summer program but it says the total cost is 18 so if we were looking at keeping that based on the fact that three would cost 11 is this 18 that's a longer period of time yeah, yeah. just yeah. the summer program yeah. so yeah. just the summer program yeah, yeah that's summer that, program is six that weeks. yeah that's this that's this will be an add-on on if we what use summer workers uh, like high school kids them. then we I but you only got them six work. weeks. That's not going to help you. No, it'd have to be say so August, August, September, October. They couldn't yeah. work. It'd have to be a regular, just someone that wanted to work part time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Driving a truck with you, you can find that. I mean, mm -hmm. you can get out and put that out. I guarantee you'll get applications for it. <clears throat> for whatever length of time you want, to, you want to do it. People well, yeah, we've got we've got applications for part time. Yeah. And full time, of course, we've got yeah. stacks yeah. of them. That we could take a look at. Are there any other departments that really count on the summer workers that are going to have reduced well, services as a result? You know, I've, I've had calls from the hospital, uh, the health department, and some other places, and I said, we just don't have the money. If y'all can put it in your budget, mm -hmm. you know, but we just can't uh, do that this year. Uh, city Hall called. They want to know if we was going to send anybody mm -hmm. to the city. Well, no, we can't. I've just explained to everybody, mm -hmm. you know, our budget is is uh, very close, and <clears throat> like I said, we we've got a balanced budget, but we're kicking, you know, kind of kicking the can down mm -hmm. the road, you know, as we move <coughs> on. Uh, we have two department after. Right. Yeah. We didn't get money. Yeah. All right. Any other questions or comments? I don't right now, Judge. Of course, we can move along, and of course, we can amend between now and the end of end of June. Yeah. Yeah. What we'd like to do is tomorrow, uh, you know, send this all past the first reading for form and classification, and then when we get it back, any amendments we want to make or changes, we'll have to get approval, of course. But as long as we don't change the form and classification, I think we can go ahead and do that, right? Emily, as far as I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, after uh, the, it's all for the uh, first reading. Do we want Russ to look at a lease to own on the two tractors we've contracted? Yeah, if, Russ, if you could call Mark to tomorrow. See what kind of dollars and, uh, we're talking about? Uh, what store was that we're talking about, Jeff? Casey Kings. Oh. oh, yeah. I just wondered mm -hmm. about that. Okay. Anything else? <laughs> Mac also said that there's a Mac dealership come by. Yeah. And they also said that like, Graves County Road Department does all the lease. Their trucks yeah. for a two-year period and then turn them somehow. That's, that's through a program that Keiko started years ago. Yeah. I can't remember, Russell, the deal. But What's that on buying a truck? Yeah, it's that Mac deal, Bob. Yeah. You, you we, buy a truck. And we talk. Buy a truck and well, you lease it. You for lease two a years. truck for a year, and then you've got turn to have somebody. You turn it back in. Somebody has to get it to used to had to get it to Atlanta for the big equipment sale, and then they sold them and had been bringing. There were a lot of them going overseas. They had been bringing nearly as much as as uh, you know the original cost, and then they lease another. They were doing that. A lot of counties are doing it. I know that. We always were a little bit 
concerned Reluctant. if what they would bring then if they don't there's it's in the contract they don't bring enough you get one down dollars. here then you pay the difference right that's right you've got to pay the difference at, at, and i'm not sure exactly above that lease payment that you've made but everybody but a lot of the counties find try out to talk that, to tony smith because i think tony and them did, did that i think so i think it cost quite a bit to get started yeah you don't have no i mean everything's under warranty you know no longer than they have them there's a lot of counties that have sung the praises of that program, and as far as I know, it's still available. It's just something that we might want to look at. I'll try to I'll try to talk to Tony first thing in the morning, uh, just to see if they're still. I know the first year they was happy. Do you know who is their superintendent, Russell? Do you know right offhand? No, I don't. I don't either. I'll talk to Tony. He'll know. Uh, okay. Anything else? Um, just to let you all know, what um, I asked Roger, and I was looking at the numbers, and I feel like to not have to increase his subsidy, I feel like we can probably raise his state inmate, what we expect to get from the state by that 25000 to get him that vehicle. That way it's not coming out of necessarily, it is our pocket, but not necessarily out of what we've already got. What we have yes, yeah. I mean, and that only... We were a lot in a hundred thousand dollars a month on state inmates now like bumps it up to a hundred and two one so that's not a big increase monthly that i i don't think we're cutting ourselves too short by doing that and that does it fixes that problem without making us a mess he could chew that horse and ride him <laughs> <laughs> he could <laughs> uh, donnie you got any ideas no. all right this one missed it and second the motion. <laughs> I think that was directed at Bob. If, if, if Donnie, if Donnie, Donnie could put a couple in that basket too and save a lot of gas mileage. Now, can you ride that bike behind the mowers? <laughs> <laughs> they don't go that fast. <laughs> you, you asked whenever I talked to you about any suggestions, and yeah. like I said, I may be talking out of turn here on this. But just kind of looking at some things over, I just wonder if there is any plans to look at, possibly uh, if there's some renegotiations that can be done on where we're spending some monies that I feel like could be backed off. And here's what I'm talking about. Looking at how much taxes we took in last year, uh, we had a 18645000 is what we took in. Of course, that gets distributed lots of places. The county got a little over a million six, is what their portion was. The hospital gets six hundred sixty-two thousand dollars off of what we collect for them. Well, I say we're still giving them a subsidy of one hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. Plus, we're still paying rent on a building that has been completed by at least I know two to three years, and still paying rent on that building and from Which, what I that's the, Calvert the, the City. Calvert City. Mm -hmm. How that's long was by, those contracts for? We'll have to I'll have to pull that. That's that's something I think that the fiscal that was, court needs to take a serious look at. We, we looked at that. We I did. did it was it's still about got a few years. Three going. more years. I mean there there there's some time yeah right. there's some time well, left it, on it'll be paid for. It'll be paid for. We'll, we'll be done with it. We talked about the. Uh, I think, I think they're still going to want rent, but we'll well, I, cross I, that bridge when we can come that, to I it. Mean, now, that, that, that wasn't the deal in the beginning. I know. That, that to me, you know, at 27 or 24000 a year, that's a little excessive as far as the rent goes. But if it's still to pay off a loan to build, you know, what built that, I understand that. Yeah. But what I'm talking about, your subsidy, you're already getting $662,000 plus. That's another $128,000 of tax money that's going to them as well. That is correct. And that that is was the deal when they took over the ambulance service. Now, uh, we they took over all the salaries. We only that. have one now. And they say this is to make up. Now, I want to renegotiate. I talked I to Mark. To uh, I, I talked to Mark and I called uh, one of the board members uh, last week and told him I would like to sit down with somebody to renegotiate that contract. Jeff and I have talked about it. Uh, Mark says they're going to show you where they're losing money, but he don't think actually 
from what he his figures and it, you know we we still own the building where where we're located what mark's telling me they give to them every year it's close three hundred fifty thousand dollars that they get every year on runs well i'm talking what they what mark what, makes and, the, and, and turns runs. over to them plus the plus subsidy, the subsidy. Yeah. yeah you're right it'll be well, I'm gonna say big. That's what we talked about last meeting. Mm -hmm. When agreement was made, they were they were in the red. The ambulance service wasn't making money, and now it is. And that's what you and I talked about at the last meeting. Yeah, they still say it's. We need not to renegotiate the, the black, that subsidy. We need to re, you know, and, and they may not give an inch. I don't know, but I think it's time we did renegotiate. Oh, now I mean, the deal over at Calvert, I think, Bob, the last time we looked, it's three more years. And it was a few more years. I don't remember yeah, exactly. I'll we need to find that date as about well. Future, you know, down the road, well, there's an expense that could probably be well, redone. That possible. that expense that expense is one that, uh, and I don't want to rehash anything, <laughs> but but uh, the Palma Bryansburg Fire Department had offered us an ambulance bay mm -hmm. free of charge to base an ambulance there. And the mayor at that time uh, just threw a big fit in a fiscal court meeting and the commissioner said, well, we'll go ahead and we'll agree to pay our portion. It's the fire station, the Riley fire station there. And uh, so, we did sign a contract, so that, you know that's water under the bridge. But uh, I know back at that time, and I can't remember who was the board chairman of Palmer Bryansburg at that time, Randy but Gray. Uh, Randy, they offered to give us uh, free access to to uh, an ambulance bay there at their new fire station, and uh, that's what I'd recommended we do. And uh, anyway, that's. That's history. But I will, I am going to try to get us a, a meeting with the hospital to try to renegotiate that. Uh, even, even at that, our reserves are, they just keep dwindling. Uh, we'd like to build them up at some point. Uh, because, like I said, our fixed costs are just going to continue to rise. There's nothing we can do about it uh, unless we start cutting benefits, and that would be awful hard to do. Uh, but we will have to look at it. We've talked about it before, look at the amount we're paying on our portion of the cost of family plans, uh, our hazardous duty retirement. Uh, and that's a that's a real sticking point as to whether or not even legally you can get out. Uh, counties have they say you can't, but they but they have got out, and the court will decide that, and then we'll know. Yeah. What county is that, Kev? Jefferson County's one it's that Jefferson. actually it's through the uh, on the behalf of KSA. Yeah. Okay. That's that's whenever Mr. Cherry changed it all together. Right. And. Uh, he didn't like the double dipping, but he draws three retirements himself. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know. Do as I say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, anybody else? Motion adjourned. I have a motion. There's a second. Second. Motion second. All in favor? Uh, Meeting's adjourned. <laughs>